Who can pronounce this? Stoichiometry. And I like to say that I only say this word about five times during this course. Stoichiometry. So that's used up twice of them already. Twice of them? Two of them. Okay? Used up two of them already. And so, stoichiometry is the study of mass relationships in chemical reactions. The study of mass relationships in chemical reactions. <clears throat> and pretty much what we've done with the mole concept so far, in and of itself, doesn't have any special applications. What we have done is we've basically learned how to work with mole calculations to kind of set us up for this stuff here. And stoichiometry, there's four, um, is what we use as a practical application to kind of help us address these questions. For example, let's say that you wanted to make sandwiches. Okay, you wanted to make some sandwiches. And uh, now we talked about chocolate chip cookies this morning, so we're going to use a different example here. So we're going to make sandwiches. So if you want to make sandwiches for 20 people, you need to decide how much spread you're going to have. So for 10, how many people do we have? 20. 20? How many slices of bread do we need? 40. So you kind of do the math then, and if the math of stoichiometry, there's five, I used them all up. <laughs> so for the math then, what we do is, we want to ask ourselves these types of questions. If we have this many raw materials, how much product can we make? Or, we might have the question is, we want to make this much product, so we want the question as, how much of the raw materials do we need? So if you make sandwiches, if you have 40 slices of bread, then you know you can make 20 sandwiches. Or on the other side of the equation, if we know we're gonna make 20 sandwiches, then you would start with 40 slices of bread. And so stoichiometry, oh shoot, that's six times. Stoichiometry um, is something where we try to address those questions, except we work with chemicals. So, we're going to start with this particular reaction, and we're going to use this, I think, for all of the rest of our examples today, where we show nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to make NH3. And when we balance this equation, we put, let's see, what do we put? We need the least common multiple between 3 and 2, which gives us 6. So in front of the H2, we'd put? 3. Three, and in front of the NH3 we put two. two. When we talked about these coefficients before, we talked about them in terms of molecules. And so even though we don't write a number here, the number that would be in front of N2 is a one. one. So what we'd say is one molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to make two molecules of ammonia. And that is what we call a molecular interpretation of this chemical equation. But we could just as well take all of these coefficients and multiply them by this number, which we call Avogadro's, Avogadro's number. And we also call it a mole. And if we took each one of these and multiplied them by a mole, then this would become one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. And that's what we refer to as the molar interpretation of this chemical equation. And so in the molar interpretation of the equations, all of the coefficients stand for moles. And like before, ones are implied, so we typically don't write ones in to the equation. So then, if we had a problem like this, we could say if 25.8 moles of hydrogen react, we might want to know how many moles and this would be moles, what do we say, moles of hydrogen? That should be H2 react how many moles of NH3 would be formed?
Well, we kind of have a basis for answering a question like this. We start off with what we're given, just like before. We're given 25.8 moles of H2. And what are we looking for? Moles of ammonia, moles of NH3. So we put that in. So then in order to convert from moles of one to moles of another, we need some sort of conversion. And that conversion would look like this. According to this chemical equation, we would say that for every three moles of hydrogen that react, we wind up producing how many moles of NH3? Two. Okay, so we'd say there's three moles of hydrogen for every two moles of ammonia. Now the way we represent these, the way your author represents them, is one of two ways. Sometimes we put a colon between them, so this represents a ratio. Sometimes we put this symbol in there, which stands for is equivalent to. And sometimes you'll see that is equivalent to is written like this. And sometimes you're going to see me write it with an equal sign. We can write them any one of these ways. It's just that according to this equation, what we're saying is that three moles of hydrogen is equivalent to two moles of ammonia, at least according to this chemical equation. So if they're equivalent to each other, we can then use them as a conversion factor in such a way that units cancel out. That means on the bottom we'd put in three moles of H2. On the top we'd put in two moles of NH3. Yep, moles of H2 are going to cancel out. And we run it through a calculator. And we take 25.8, multiply it by two, and then divide it by three, and wind up with 17.2 as the answer. Now how many significant figures should this answer have? Three. three. That's because we have three here. This is an exact conversion, so that would not have any bearing on the end result. Wind up with 17.2 for your answer. This relationship right here is referred to as a molar ratio. It's a molar ratio. And a molar ratio comes from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And when I remember, I try to write them in red so you can tell that I'm borrowing them as the coefficients. So again, a molar ratio comes from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So that takes us to the next example. Oh, any questions on this? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to use the same equation for this next question, and there's actually the next two questions coming up on the Socrative app. And the first one says, what is the correct molar ratio between N2 and H2? And then your next question after that will be this one, and it will be, how many moles of N2 <coughs> will react with 9.33 moles of H2? And once again, we're going to use this balanced chemical equation. Five, four, three, two, one. And very good. It's a molar ratio. One mole of N2, three moles of H2. And where do these numbers come from? Coefficients. Coefficient on N2 is a one. The coefficient on H2 is a three.
3, 2, 1. Correct answer is 3.11 moles. 3.11 moles is the correct one. Now, to arrive at this one, this one's pretty straightforward. We start with the 9.33 moles. I don't know why this thing does that. The 9.33 moles of H2, and we're looking for moles of N2. So we need a conversion factor in here. This is called a molar ratio. On the bottom we'd put in 3 moles of H2. And on the top we'd put in 1 mole of N2. And we pick these two out to get our units to cancel out. These numbers again come from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And again, it was 3.11. Okay, any questions on these?